Absolutely. Yeah, yeah always a to do that. So I just want to briefly introduce Chris Poth here. I first came to know Chris in 2004 because we were in a, in a group show. We were in a two-person show in, in Concord at, at a gallery that used to represent Chris. And it was, it was a figure show. And we became uh, friends um, as a result of being in that show together. And we subsequently... Um, Good friends. Good friends, good, <laughs> good drinking friends. <laughs> Very the good, only, yes. the only friends. So, so good in fact that we, we shared a studio together for, for many years. And it was great because when I was using the studio, Chris wasn't around. <laughs> when Chris was using the studio, I wasn't around, so I didn't get into his hair, but it was, it was um, great to, I could watch Chris's paintings evolve. I'd go in every week and the paintings would be further advanced. It was really always, I always looked forward to seeing what, what Chris was doing. Uh, and, um, and, and Chris taught a range of courses here, as you mentioned before, mural painting, and you're, you're doing foundations. Yeah, right foundations. Now. And you're, you're going to be moving out to the, to the West Coast yeah. this summer, yeah. correct? Right? Yeah. Um, Become a winner. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Your wife doesn't know about it. Let's uh, bring it on there. Gently. <laughs> um, and uh, I always felt that Chris had something really special to offer our, our students here at the Institute because he is a working artist. That he has made his living uh, all of his adult life painting. Doing commercial work, which he'll, he'll talk about, and developing a business. And he's also been able to manage a really great fine art career, too. In his late, the latest work that I've seen was over at 100 Market Street. I think a few of you are in that, in that show. And, and you, you received the, the award. Yeah. Um, and I, so I, like, I'm going to dearly miss Chris um, as, as a friend and as, as an artist. And I think, you know, in a perfect world, we can t do professional work, commercial work, and we can continue doing our our fine art work. And Chris has found that that magic blend, which he's going to talk about today. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much, Chris. Appreciate, appreciate you doing that. A very fine introduction. All right. So how are you all doing today? Good. Good. Good, man. Um. All right, so the way I'm going to break it down is this. Yeah, like, like Gary was saying, um, when I was, you know, one of the things when I was going through art school, uh, you know, I just, from the time I was about 19, I was actually a late bloomer myself, but when I was around 19, I decided that I'm going to be a painter for the rest of my life. And, <coughs> But then after going to school, see, I went to school a little bit later. I was about 21 as a freshman. But for me, I knew exactly what I wanted. When I went to school, I was laser focused, and I knew what I wanted. I knew I had really high goals of what I wanted to achieve. So, but when I was in school, that there's no one that really says, hey, listen, this is how you actually make a living doing this. You know, most of my professors were just like, uh, have fun trying to make a living. <laughs> and so <clears throat> about a year after graduating, yeah, you know, I was working in, I was actually doing construction in, in Boston. And, you know, I was building houses in, in Boston. I was a roofer. Um, I was absolutely miserable because I just wanted to make art. I just want to be an artist. And so one day I uh, <clears throat> one day I actually went to the job site. It was in Watertown, Massachusetts. And I opened up the door to the job site because I opened up the job site in the morning. And I literally like I'd be I'd be demoing walls, building roofs, building, you know, putting in bathrooms, kitchens, doing all this kind of grunt work. And I opened up the key, I opened up the door to the job site. And I just threw the keys in the ground and left. It was 8, eight o'clock in the morning. And that was the last day I ever worked for somebody that day. It was in 1999, right? 
So then <clears throat> my wife was like, I wasn't married yet, but my wife, my girlfriend at the time, she's like, what the hell did you do? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, I just, I want to do my own thing. <clears throat> and so that was uh, 16 years ago. Actually, almost seven, yeah, 16 years ago this summer. So what do I do next? Um, I, you know, I, I've always been a guy who kind of jumps on opportunities. And that's very important if you want to have your own career, if you want to do your own thing, is jumping on opportunities. If you see a window, go there, all right? <clears throat> and that's very important as an artist is to, is to really know when you have an opportunity and do it. And one of those opportunities I had, this is my opportunity. I was actually, you know, as a kid, me and my friends would always go to this Irish pub. And we were kind of regulars there. Um, but the owner of the pub was this um, Irish guy. And he didn't really know me that well. I knew one of the owners, but not him. And one day, I overheard him talking about a mural, putting a mural on the side of the building, right? And I went up to him, I said, I do that for a living. I've never done this in my life. <laughs> <laughs> but I told him I did this for a living. He's like, okay. And um, he's like, well, give me a price. So I was like, well, okay. So I went back home and I just like, and he told me what he wanted. He wanted uh, a pint of Guinness. And uh, he wanted like a, if you've ever seen these old Guinness posters, there's a pint of Guinness and the toucan and like lovely day for a Guinness that says all this stuff. And then the name of the pub underneath. And this is, this is 35 feet in the air. That's how big this building is, right? <clears throat> so I went back and I did some sketches and I was like trying to figure out how much it would cost to do it. And uh, I went back to him and I said, oh, it's gonna be $3,600. And he said, okay, <clears throat> sounds good. And um, the day before I was supposed to do it, here I am standing with him and the other owner trying to figure out how I'm gonna get up there. <laughs> <laughs> and at, at that moment, <laughs> He realized that I didn't know what the hell I was talking about. <laughs> and he looked at me, he said, he looked at me and he said, I knew I shouldn't have fucking hired you lad. <laughs> and I was like, oh crap, I am screwed. But <clears throat> the next day, well, we ended up renting a scissor lift, which is this massive thing that has to get delivered and it can go 40 feet in the air. You drive it around. <clears throat> The next day I showed up and had the scissor lift, never operate a scissor lift. <laughs> <laughs> and all I have was this drawing of this <laughs> Guinness poster, so. <clears throat> I sat in my car for about four hours, like just, ma what I did was I gridded it. So I did, an, I did an X, Y axis, right? And I gridded and plotted points. But I was trying to figure out all my points and this guy's looking at me in my car like, for four hours, and be like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> You're not doing anything. <laughs> so needless to say, the pressure was on me. <clears throat> so the good news is six days later, I finished the mural. I thought it was gonna take me three weeks. It took me six days. And uh, to this day, me and Coley, Ryan, laugh about this job because <laughs> And the thing is, um, <clears throat> and we're gonna get into this a little later on, um, but one of the things is that mural is still as brand new today as it was 16 years ago that I did it, okay? Because I used the right materials, I did the right preparation, right? And so <clears throat> it's still standing right there. But that's my first job, okay? So here I was, I was a fine artist, fine art, I was a painter, representational painter in college and here I am painting a mural on the side of the building. But I learned a lot through that that first job and that kind of springboarded me into my career because from that actually you know interest, interesting enough from that job I've done I've, I've done probably 10 Irish pubs in Boston <laughs> Boston and throughout and just through that one job I met a, a 
bartender who worked there opened up a pub in Lowell. So I did his pub. And then the guy who built the bar builds bars in Boston. And he gave my name to people who build, build bars in Boston. And then I still, to this day, work for a family that I started working for in like 2003. So every time they open up a new bar, and they own like 15 restaurants and bars, they call me to do work. And it was all from that one first job I did because I did a good job and everyone was happy. But <clears throat> as you can see, you have to start somewhere. And sometimes you have to tell a little fib, right? To get where you want to be. All right, so the way I'm gonna break this down is this. <clears throat> is uh, I'm gonna talk about fine art versus commercial art. And uh, this is a very important distinction. Um, You know, as a young person, I was always like, I'm gonna be a fine artist, I'm not gonna care, I'm not gonna do anything anyone wants me to do, I'm just gonna do what I wanna do, when I wanna do it, right? But the reality is, you need to make a living somehow. So, <clears throat> so what's the difference between fine art and commercial art? Now to me, if fine art is, um, oh, that's what I wrote. Fine art is a personal exploration. And what I mean by that, to me, fine art is your lifelong learning. It's your lifelong personal exploration into yourself. It's your way of communicating. It's who you really are as an artist. That, to me, is what fine art is. It's something that should never be, um, you should always be truthful when it comes to your fine art because it's part of you. And I think of it as this, I am going to be a fine artist till the day I croak, right? I will be. And that's me as a fine artist. It's very serious, it's very important, and it basically is my identity, right? And that's what fine art is to me. It's what I wanna say about the world, it's what what I want to communicate with others, the way I see things, right? So that is what fine art is to me. Now commercial art to me is basically using your skills for someone else. So that is more client-based. Commercial art is client-based. You have a client who needs something and you provide that for them. That is commercial art. So those, that's the difference between the two. Now, it's not to say that one is better than the other, right? But it means that <clears throat> some people just want to be a commercial artist, and that's completely fine. Some people want to be just a fine artist, and that's fine too if you have a trust fund or if you're a billionaire, <laughs> right? <clears throat> or you're married to someone like that. But <clears throat> it's really hard to juggle the two. But one of the things I want to really emphasize is separating yourself between these two, okay? So, fine art, <clears throat> let's just talk about fine art for a, a moment. Um, I know, you know, when I was young, I really wanted to, I wanted to be a fine artist so bad that it's like, I wanted everything right now, but now I realize that it's a very slow progression. It really is. I mean, if you ask Gary over there, he'll tell you that it's, it's, a, it's a decades long, 20 years long, 30 years long, 40 years long experience. It's not, going to, it's not something that's gonna just come and get you right now. You have to think about it in the very long term, right? So when you think about fine art, think about long, your long term goals. Where I wanna be when I'm 50? Where do I wanna be when I'm 60? Where do I wanna be when I'm 70? That's fine art. Because in order to be really truthful to yourself, it takes a long time to figure out what you want to say. It takes a long time for you to, if you think about it like, <clears throat> you as a fine artist is like, it's like a wine. You want that wine to ferment, right? You don't want to, you don't want to drink it too quick because it hasn't aged appropriately yet, right? 
You want it to age. You want to build your skills, your technical hands. And then you want to combine that with your personal experiences. And that takes a long time. So that's not something you want to rush. So I would really be patient with, if you want to really be a fine artist, be patient with that. It's very important. Because that's going to really affect how you are when you're 50 years old, when you're 60 years old. You want to develop into the right, you want to develop into the best artist you can be. 